Hey, I'm Scuffed, and this video will be the first episode in the Journey to Catastrophe series. In this episode, I'm going to be going over all of the four-wheel drive verts that I made that led up to Catastrophe, so that you'll have some context behind the design choices. This is my first time using studio models in my video, so forgive me if I don't do a good job at showing them off. Without further ado, let's begin. So, this here is Endgame 1.0, the first ever four-wheel drive vertical bar spinner that I made. So, at the time, I thought this thing was pretty good, but now that I look at it, it's pretty atrocious. So, for the chassis, it's just a standard four-wheel drive drive system. Um, at this time, I was still using chain, so it's chain drive, and the wheels don't stick out of the back, so it's not invertible. And this thing had no self-rider. So it was not able to self-ray if it got flipped. So, um, the weapon system is a buggy motor clone on 1 to 3 on the slow port. Uh, with this, um, monstrosity of a weapon. I have no idea why I decided to use these, um, slabs for the weapon, but I didn't really have anything else. And, uh, I was pretty lazy and I just needed a weapon to test this thing out with. So, this thing had a lot of issues. Uh, the first one being the fact that it couldn't self-write if it got flipped. So, if it ever got flipped, the fight was basically over. Um, second issue was that it used chains. Chains are notoriously unreliable. Sometimes they work great and sometimes they just, like, immediately break in the fight for no reason. And then the third main issue was that the weapon was super, super close to this wire right here. Um, when it gyroed, it would clip the battery. Um, and the reason the battery's here is because I couldn't really find any other spot for the battery, uh, because this section right here is taken up, and this section right here has the weapon motor. So, for ground game, it had two of these... Uh, so, two of these lawn forks... Um, they were pretty annoying, and I just used them, uh, to try them out, because I've never used them before. And then, there were two of these forks that I used on Riptide, um, which was one of my old four-wheel drive egg beaters. So, overall, this thing was pretty good for a first attempt at a four-wheel drive vert, but now, it, like, now that I look at it, these, this thing is absolutely atrocious. Like, there's... Close to no vertical bracings on this thing, except for the back. The back is well braced, but the sides, th they're not well braced at all. And then this thing was an absolute pain to repair. Like, these compartments on the sides um, were just filled with bracings. And after I built it, I realized that I couldn't really take them out. So, um, yeah, that was fun to deal with. So, yeah, this is Endgame 1.0. And now, on to Endgame 2.0. If you thought Endgame 1.0 looked bad, then you're gonna hate Endgame 2.0. So, Endgame 1.0 and 2.0 have the same chassis or base, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's just that Endgame 2.0 had these two armor panels on the sides. They didn't really do much. They weren't really well braced. So, they flew off in basically every match. So, the ground game still has these two forks from Riptide on the sides, and then I swapped out the two longer forks to these uh, brick separators, because the brick separators were more effective and less annoying uh, to deal with. So, still has four-wheel drive with chains, which was an issue, and then the the self-writer was uh, truly one of the self-writers of all time. So, this was my very first attempt at making a self-writer, and as you could tell, it was... Um, very scuffed, to say the least. So, um, this whole bracing over here was way too big, and the self-rider worked, but it ended up breaking in almost every match, um, when it wasn't used because these axles would slide out. So, the weapon system moved from the left side of the bot to the right side, and it's still using a third-party buggy motor clone, but this time, it's a 1.66 to 1 gear ratio, so it's still geared up, but it's not as fast. Um, and then the weapon also changed, so instead of using the 
atrocious slabs from Endgame 1.0, it swapped to these bind-up motors. I was trying them out for bar spinners, and they worked pretty well. The only issue uh, was that you couldn't really mount a sharper tooth on it, so you kind of just smacked people with the rounded edge of these wind-up motors. So, the electronic layout basically completely changed. The battery's now positioned here. Um, in one of its fights with uh, against Coin, uh, Coin managed to rip these armor panels off, I think, and it ripped the wires off of the battery. So, that wasn't good. So, overall, this model, it was better than the first iteration. It had a self-writer, so it could get back up. But it was way less durable, and the electronics would uh, were not as reliable because the battery is now exposed to attack, and the self writer broke constantly. So here we have Endgame 3.0, the first robot in the lineup that kind of looks like Endgame. So Endgame 3.0 has a completely redesigned chassis. It's a it has a much wider wheelbase now. And it's a lot more durable, it's vertically braced better, it's horizontally braced better. Um, it has this crossbar in between the two weapon uprights to keep the bot together uh, when it takes a horizontal hit. Um, the drive system now uses bevel gears to keep things more compact. Um, still uses chains for the four-wheel drive, which is an issue, but it was a lot more reliable than the previous version because the front wheel is powering the back wheel. So with these bevel gears, I'm able to change the speed of the drive. So I can either go 1 to 1, or I can go 1.66 to 1, which will gear it up, and I can go 1 to 1.66, which will gear it down. So it has a much better drive system than Endgame 2.0, and it has a more durable chassis. So, the weapon system uses basically the same weapon as Endgame 2.0, just with different internal bracings. Um, but, it had a different weapon system. So, right here, it uses the same third-party buggy motor clone to power the weapon, but this time it's on one-to-one -one on the slow pour, or the torque pour, whatever you want to call it. So, with this robot, I was experimenting with self-writing uh, via the weapon, and it kind of worked. So I needed enough torque to spin the weapon while it was hitting the floor in case the weapon stalls when I get flipped over, and I needed enough kinetic energy to give it enough momentum to flip itself back over. So one-to-one -one gave it enough torque, but it didn't give it enough uh, kinetic energy, so it could not reliably self-write with front attachments on. Without the front attachments, it could self-write basically every time. But the moment you put even a single brick separator on the front of this thing, the front becomes heavier and it wants to tip back over more when it's trying to self-write instead of uh, tipping back over to its wheels. So the weapon self-writing was a bit run uh, unreliable and this thing didn't have many fights. It had one fight, or I had two fights against America, and then that was it. And then I retired this thing. So, overall, it's a lot better than Endgame 2.0, but it still had its issues with the self-writing. Alright, the fourth and final robot in the lineup is Pandemic. This is the last four-wheel drive vertical spinner that I built before Catastrophe. So Pandemic was heavily inspired by another robot I fought called Epidemic. I met him at the Brick Rodeo 2023 event, and Epidemic did really well. I got second place right behind Avalanche, and we had a pretty close uh, finals match. Epidemic was really durable. I had a really good drivetrain, uh, but it did have some issues. The main one being the fact that it couldn't self-write. It was not invertible, it didn't have a self-writer because it was on the weight limit, and it used chains for the drive, and the chains popped off in every single match. So, I wanted to basically make a copy of Epidemic, but I wanted to address the two main issues. So, we have gear drive over here with three of these 40-tooth gears, and then we have the self-writing mechanism um, to flip the robot back over if it gets flipped. So, this robot was pretty light. I think it was 800-something grams, so it was pretty good. 
um, much better than any game 3.0, 2.0, and 1.0. Uh, however, the ground game was much worse than the previous end game versions. So, um, for the front walls, I used these 3x11 plates as the front armor. And they worked pretty well. They, I, they had a ton of connection points on the top, bottom, and sides. But they were lacking in connection points on the front. So I ended up pinning the forks to the um, 3x11 panels. And this was an issue because any small impact would rip these right off. Because the only thing holding these forks in place was the friction of these two little pins. So... Um, in the two test fights this thing had against Black Ops V1, the forks would constantly fly off. The weapon was about the same as Endgame 3.0. It's a different design, it's a disc, but it had about the same punching power. So, um, a lot of Catastrophe's, um, like, design choices came from this robot, like the use of these 3x19 frames, and just the general shape and the gear drive. So, this robot never really had any fights, just like Endgame 3.0. It had a few test fights, but no official fights, and it never competed at an, at an event. So, in the next episode, I'll be going over all of the iterations of Catastrophe, from Catastrophe 1.0 to 1.7, which is the version that competed at uh, Kerbal Season 3. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I want to take a second to thank all of you guys for getting me to 800 subscribers. I'll see y'all in Episode 2.